Leave me. I'm waiting for your uncle. What are the chances? Uh, pretty slim, I'd say. He's trying to teach some old dogs new tricks. Stupid brutes! Mindless brutes! Ah, they've bitten me. Beast! Stupid, ungrateful brute! Drawn blood. Knew it. Fainton! Thomas! What the devil? Take these creatures away! Fames! They've bitten me! Things. Could you possibly get hold of Mr. Richmond? We've got to get back to town. I'm afraid Mr. Richmond's had a slight accident, sir. One of the dogs. If you'll excuse me, sir, the first aid kit. This will mean another hold-up. Well, this will put fair to your chances for the old man today. He's got to approve this draft before the board meeting. Perhaps I'd better have a look at it. Damn brute! Where's the new nurse? Why isn't she here? Uh, she's not away from London, Uncle. What's she doing? Walking? Where have you been? What have you got there? I've just approved this merger agreement. I didn't think you wanted to be bothered with it. Oh, you didn't, eh? Give it to me. Damned hand bleeding here, bind it tighter. We can't have this suspended production clause to lay the Toronto operation by three weeks. Seven C and eight out. But your nephew thought that... Not interested in what my nephew thinks. Redraft. Come along, man. Come along. Damned hand painful. Get Dr. Murray. Be quick about it. Thank you, gentlemen. Where are you going? Get Dr. Murray, sir. Well, hurry up about it. Why are you late? Oh, well, you know what London is, sir? No, I don't. What kept you? Your tailor, your manicurist, your hair stylist, eh? You really must sign this today, Uncle. We don't want them to invoke the penalty clause. It'll cost us money. Damn swindle. You can trust them to redraft. Trust? Nonsense. Don't trust anyone. I'll see the draft myself before the board meeting. Well, mind you do, then. Where's that nurse? I need a nurse. A uh, nurse is coming, Uncle. Want a pretty nurse, none of those blasted battle axes. Last one they sent me, hag, moustache. Ate goat's cheese all day and stank of it. Uh. Go on, go on. Where's the doctor? Put me to bed. I knew. That bishop left him unguarded. To tempt your queen. Listen. Extraordinary effect. Underrated Berlioz, warm man of true passion. Check. But not mate, not yet. Your middle game competent, your end game poor. Like your father. No spine, no stamina. Under pressure, you came in. I'm tired, tired. What are you waiting for? Change the tape. Where's the new nurse? Waiting all day. Damned hand. Hurts. Now, the car's meeting her at the station. She's promised to be on the 6.35. Promised to take her word, incompetent, no follow-up. National disease, no follow-up. Yes? She's here. About time, too. Let's have a look at her. Moustache again, I dare say. Sweating armpits. Go easy on her. I'm running out of agencies. Poppin' Jay, she's for me. Remember that. Come in, girl. My uncle doesn't like people to stand too close to him. Well, what kept you? Waiting all day. Bad start. Bad manners. I'm sorry. I needed sleep. My patient died last night. Died on you? Well, you kill him off, do you? Well, he won't get me. Who told you to switch off? Carry on. Louder. I understand you have an injured hand. May I look at it? Tomorrow will do. 
Name? Maria Marcello. Foreigner. No wonder. Left it to you. You wash regularly, Miss... Um... Yes, Mr. Richmond. I wash regularly. It is necessary in my job. That's all right, then. Mm. Smells good. None of that goat's cheese nonsense, thank God. No moustache. Tell her what she has to know. Nephew. We've met. What? Met? I was inspected this morning. Uh, I thought you'd like me to interview Miss Marcello personally, Uncle. Don't fancy your taste in women. I'll show you to your room. Louder, louder, I can't hear. Difficult case. Difficult patient. But I do hope you'll stay. I'm in no hurry. Your chef is good. Ex Savoy. I'll have something sent up. Thank you. The nurse's room. It always is the nurse's room. I'm afraid it's the best we can manage. When I've eaten, I'll take another look at the patient. Uh, you heard what my uncle said. Tomorrow will do. You know, your photograph doesn't do you justice. My photograph? Is that important? Appearances are very important. In a nurse. I had to pick carefully. You see, there have been mistakes in the past. But I'm sure we've made no mistake this time. Oh, ten minutes at the agency. You don't know me. You're wrong there, Maria. I know quite a bit about you. Your background, your past. My private life has nothing to do with you, Mr. Richmond. My uncle's not an easy man to handle. He's used to getting what he wants. Exactly what he wants. No, it requires tact and a great deal of patience. Now, I'm sure you have the necessary qualifications to... I'm a trained nurse, and I'm used to difficult patients. That's all you need to know about me. Good night, Mr. Richmond. I hope you're very comfortable, Maria. Living at Foxhurst does have its points. Really? You know, you don't look like a nurse. I assure you I am. But I doubt if it's a nurse you require. I can assure you we do. Good night. Good night. comfortable than eating in your room, eh, Miss... Um... More formal, certainly, Mr. Richmond. You disapprove of formality, Miss uh, Marcello? Or do you object to my servants, perhaps? No, why I use them, tell you. They serve. Hundreds of years of waiting on the white man. In their blood service. Thing of the past for us, everybody's a master. No sense of duty anymore, no respect. A Negro may no longer know his place here or in America. But in Africa, you can still find some who do. Eh, Thomas? Hmm. A fine, primitive creature, Thomas. No aspirations, no education, but he knows what's what, don't you, boy? As you see, Miss Marcello, my uncle has solved the servant problem in his own inimitable manner. He treats his servants like dogs, and his dogs like servants. Yes, just look at him, Miss Marcello. Observe those lily-white hands, if you please. Good for nothing except driving jaguars and seducing women. Don't you wish you could still do either, Uncle? Laugh. Go on. Like your father. Laughing boy. Yeah, you'll live like him, die like him, shuffling for shillings. Mr. Richmond, I don't think you need my services any longer. Your hand is quite healed. You'll allow me to decide that, Miss Marcello. You leave when I tell you. But you don't really need me. I'd prefer to go somewhere where I could be useful. Some dreary suburban accouchement, I suppose. Don't you think it might be more profitable looking after me? 
I get paid the same rate by everybody. You're a hypocrite, Miss Marcello. You know damn well I can pay you ten times more than anyone else. I only require my normal rate, if you don't mind. Well, we'll see about that. You'll stay. Understand, since my wife died 20 years ago, I seem to suffer from a lack, a lack of feminine company, of agreeable feminine company, that is. I shouldn't have thought it would be difficult for a man like you, Mr. Richard. To find someone, really? How do you suppose a man like me provides himself with a, with agreeable feminine company? Sends money to a mail order service? Has someone fished out of the typing pool for me? Not easy. One has to be careful. But I'm very pleased with you, Miss Marcello. Very pleased indeed. I'm so glad. The dinner was excellent. Good night. That's right. You go, Miss Marcello, up to your room. And tomorrow, burn that uniform. Make yourself look like a woman. Nice and desirable. Rustle, crackle, and swish. You hear? Well, it's gone. It's gone. All over and done with. But it isn't quite done with. Is it, Uncle? Yes? Anthony, can I see you? Just a moment. He likes you. You remind him of his wife. Really? You've come to tell me that? Actually, I've come to apologize for his behavior. It can be terribly rude. There was no need for you to come. I hope you'll stay. He's a sick man. There are other nurses. Not like you. I want you to stay. Do women always do what you want, Mr. Richmond? Invariably. May I sit down? No. Thank you. I find you a very intriguing girl, Maria. For one thing, there seems to be so many of you. Are there? I only know of one. Well, tell me about her. She's what you see. Very beautiful. And ambitious. Not anymore. Then why did you leave Italy? <laughs> Those towns in the south, they are fine for the tourists. But for the poorer inhabitants, they are hell. I had no one. So I came to England. To find a better life? Yes. And have you found it? No. Not yet. No. I don't want to tell you anymore. You just told me a great deal. Maria, you will stay, won't you? Please go, Mr. Richmond. You're an attractive man, but I'm not interested. Neither in you or your uncle. Well, that's a pity. Because we both of us are fascinated by you. dogs what I want of them. But, sir, bend down. Down you go. That's right, as if I were to kick you up there. But it's, but it's childish. Now then, you Fenton, jump over your brother. They'll imitate you. That's the style. That's good. Come on now, Jacko. You watch this, you little fool. Watch Jacko. Now, come on. Come on. Over. Aha. They are brothers, these two devoted to each other and to me. Come along now. Come along, Fenton. But it's cruel. Cruel and pointless. Now, let, let Wallow have a try. That's the ticket. Now again. Over. Well done, Jacko. No, don't stop, Fenton, you duffer. I've seen enough. Goodbye, Mr. Richmond. Please send your check to the agency. How dare you! Come back here, you stupid...
stupid girl. That's what I pay them for, you little fool. Stupid girl. They like it, I tell you. They like it. What's the matter? I'm leaving now. He's a monster. Cruel. He treats people like dirt. You, you saw what happened? Yes, she said she's leaving. You want me to get her back? No, no. No, get someone else. Let her go. No, I thought you'd come. Come in. So, this is where you live all alone? Yes. Not quite like Foxhurst, I'm afraid. Nobody in your life? <laughs> not now. Why were you so sure I'd come? Because you want something from me. Do I? Are you sure it's not the other way around? You want to be persuaded. You think you know me, then? I've spent a long time looking for someone like you, Maria. Like me? Yes. Someone who wants like you want. Wants what? The Richmonds are a very wealthy family. Just how much do you think we are worth? A million? A million? Nearer 50. 50 million. You see, Maria, you are basically very naive. You want, but you don't know. You don't know how. What are you trying to tell me? Now tell me why you came. Well, I have a proposal to make. A marriage proposal. What makes you think I'd marry you? Oh, you flatter me. No, it's not me you're going to marry. It's my uncle. I don't... I don't know if I could do it. He's frightening, cruel. He's not a man you can have human contact with. You were prepared to look after him as a nurse. Well, as a wife, his uh, demands would be a little greater. It wouldn't last long. My uncle's a hypochondriac for a very good reason, Maria. He's shortly going to die. I know his condition. He could last a long time. Oh, go like that. Why do you hate him so much? Well, my father and Richmond were partners. But he drove him out, hounded him, destroyed him. Well, it was all in the way of business. No melodramatics. Just the weaker man going to the wall. But I knew better. When my father committed suicide, it was just another triumph for Charles Richmond. Why should he want to do that to his own brother? You've heard him speak so lovingly of his wife. You've seen her portraits. She was beautiful. She was my mother, my father's widow. No. But why does he have you with him? He must know that you hate him. Charles Richmond thrives on hate. If the whole world hates you, that in itself is a kind of power. A few months ago, he made his will, a last gesture of hate. Everything to charity. Charities he knows and cares nothing about. And to me, a measly 20,000 pounds. That's wealth to me. A pittance. No, my uncle's fortune. That's wealth, real wealth. That's why you're going to marry him. He'll change his will and you'll inherit everything. Everything you ever <coughs> dreamed about. If I understand you correctly, not quite everything. One million pounds for getting him for you. That's what I want, for making it possible. 
You see, I've been shaping this in my mind for a long time. All I needed was the right person. And now I found her. How do you know he'll want to marry me? It's the gamble we take. He likes you. If he likes me so much, why do I need you? My dear girl, you're shrewd. But to land a man like Charles Richmond needs a lot more guile than you have. No, you couldn't hope to do it on your own. I might. With me against you? I don't think so. Even with my help, he still wouldn't be certain. He's unpredictable and utterly ruthless. One mistake could cost us everything. How do you know you can trust me? I think I can, Maria. I thought this was a business arrangement. Memo Jackson, Allied Aviation. Yours dated 19th June. Matter reveals incompetence your department. Report what disciplinary action you are taking. See ya. Get these tapes to the office. Oh, it's you, is it? I'm just collecting your medicines to pack. Cruises, holidays, damn good mind to cancel the whole thing. It'll do you good. Ever been in a yacht, Miss Marcello? No, I'm looking forward to it. Damned uncomfortable. Hey, what the devil? You know perfectly well you are forbidden to smoke. Dr. Murray Dr. said Dr. Murray's so. an old woman. Look here, I know you mean well, but it's, alas, one of the few pleasures left to me. Give me the key, just this one box. It's out of the question. No one need know. Secret between us. You have been ordered not to smoke, Mr. Richmond. No one orders me to do anything, Miss Marcello. No one. No quack. No servant. Now, be a good girl and give me that key. I'll give you a fiver for every cigar in the box. It holds 20. You're wasting your time, Mr. Richmond. I'm here to look after you, not to conspire with you against your health. Now, you're angry with me because I tried to bribe you. Indelicate. Forgive me? Of course. Used to people who'll do anything for money. You're different. I'll have to learn. Look. Like it? Superb. For you. A peace offering. No, Mr. Richmond, I couldn't possibly take Wear it. Wear it. If I don't behave myself, you can give it me back. Oh, it's very kind of you, but... Please, want someone pretty to wear it. And I will insert the key in the lock and get out those cigars. You can be such a nice man, Mr. Richmond. Why do you choose to act like a pig? cigars with us. I've spoken to Southampton. The captain will be ready to sail on the evening tide. Get those tapes to the office. Damn girl, too big for her boots. Try to stop me smoking. Good mind to leave her behind. Would you like me to contact the agency? Down no, now. I'll have a word with her, sir. Fat lot of good that'll do. You're quite right to refuse me those cigars, Miss Marcello. Save me a hundred pounds. I keep more than one box in my study. I'm just testing your good nature. You're making an excellent start, Miss Marcello. An excellent start. Mr. Richmond, for a man in your condition, one cigar is the equivalent of a man's life. You're trying to scare me, girl. I'm not afraid of death. Personally, I think you're a very brave man to squander the little capital you have left. I don't really think your position gives you license to insult my uncle, Miss Marcello. I'll get your things into the car. Send her packing, uncle. When I need your advice, dear boy, I'll ask for it. Oh, 
I got everything here, Uncle. I hope so. Home. Why are you sitting so far away, Miss Marcello? You forget I had my instructions, Mr. Richmond. Listen to that. That lightness, grace, serenity. They thought of him as a boor, Beethoven. A gross, clumsy, vulgar oaf. No sense of humor. No social graces kept people at arm's length. You think of me as a monster, don't you? Only when you try to intimidate me. People like to be intimidated. People feel comforted by strength. They complain, but they feel serene somehow. She felt serene with me. Your wife? She was devoted, Natalie. Didn't think of me as a boor, didn't think of me as a rich crank, no. Devoted. That was a long time ago. I built this yacht for our honeymoon. Call it old-fashioned now, I suppose. Somehow, I never felt like changing. I'm boring you. Of course not. Different man then, of course. I was active, not only in the mind. Natalie loved music, too. We gave wonderful musical parts. The only use she had for money, music. The rest didn't interest her. You could say she married me in spite of my will. <laughs> God alone knows what she saw in me, but she was devoted. All our years of marriage, she never once raised her voice to me. Never tried to wheedle anything out of me. She was exceptional. You were a lucky man. She died in great pain. A kind nature's no defense against sickness and death. So what's the point of it? He was telling me about your mother. How she liked his strength after my father's weakness. How she loved him despite his wealth. He was so sad when he talked about her dying. Did he tell you what he said the minute after she died? No. He said, you gave me everything and took nothing. You were a very stupid woman. Let's not get sentimental, shall we? Great improvement since you took over the catering, Miss Marcello. Thank you. Miss Marcello will soon be capable of taking over the ship. And what does that mean? Nothing, Uncle. Except that her nursing duties are far from heavy. Your call to hand, Erksar. Kramer? Well, have you seen the minister? Damn the treaty. I know the clause as well as he does. I thought you told me all that had been cleared. Well, does he want me to go direct to the Chancellor? Do they want the plant or don't they? If I don't get some action within 24 hours, I'll take the whole project elsewhere. Get back to me. Clear that away. Take that chicken away. Please leave the place where they are. You heard my uncle, Miss Marcello. You instructed me to look after the catering, Mr. Richmond. I did indeed, Miss Marcello, but it so happens I abominate fowl. I know. The chicken is for us. I made fish specially for you. I must ask you not to argue with me, Miss Marcello, in front of the other servants. Tell the cook he's sacked as soon as we dock. It has nothing to do with him. I did the cooking. Really, sir?
I will not have my orders countermanded. Bring fish for my guests. And while you're up, Captain, put on some music. I can't. At times he seems almost human, then suddenly he acts like a maniac. Shh. And you, you encourage him. I have to fight both of you. It's just part of the game. Haven't you noticed I'm always in the wrong? If I'm against you, he's for you. It's working splendidly. Is it? For you, perhaps. Not for me. You took me for something I'm not. Can never be. I took you for a woman. A woman who wants. You think money's all I want? The other things. He'll be fine in the morning. You'll let him stay here till morning, miss? It's more comfortable than the servants' quarters. I'll sleep in the saloon. Thank you, miss. Why do you work for him, Thomas? There's a big family back home. We send money. There are other ways of earning money. It's not just that. All my people work for Mr. Richmond in the copper mines. We have to do what he says. I don't. You're leaving us, miss? Yes, as soon as we dock. If you take my advice, you leave too. You and your brother. I guess we're greedy. Aren't we all? Not you. I'm glad you're going, for your sake. But it'll be worse without you. Good night, miss. Good night. Thank you. 
Scusi. I'm looking for somewhere to stay. A room. Have you got a room? Only for a night. Uh, no, no tourist here. No, no room. Hotel? Si, hotel. Will you take me? Muy lejos. I give you some money. Molte grazie. Anyone here? ¿Qué desea, señorita? I want a room, please. Okay, doc. A passport? Yes. Uh, this way, please. Dressed. I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back, Tony. Then you fool, you're back where you started. What are you going to do for the rest of your life? Play nursemaid forever, scrub floors, marry some waiter? Perhaps. We made a bargain. I can't keep it, I'm sorry. You'll keep it. I found you, I chose you. Find someone else. They are me. I chose you, you, you for what you are. And you're coming back. No. I'm free of him now. And free of me? Are you free of me? You're hurting my arm. You know what you're throwing away, what you're losing. Foxhurst. And all that goes with it. He goes with it. Richmond. Oh, not for long. Too long for me. I'm sorry, Tony. It's finished. I go with it. Maria. Are we finished, too? I'll wait for you downstairs in the truck. Goodbye, Tony. If 
he wants me back, he'll have to come and get me. Himself. Here. Now. Today. He won't come. He doesn't even know you've left the ship. Then tell him. Uh, this isn't the way to play it, Maria. Not with Richmond. You want me to be hard. All right. Get him here. I'll be waiting. And if he doesn't come? Then it's over. Once and for all. We leave for Palmer at dusk. Tell the captain he's sulking like a schoolgirl. And tell Miss Marcello to come to her senses. I shan't wait, Father. Miss Marcello? Miss Marcello has left the ship. Really? She's probably gone shopping. No! It's just come, Father. Haven't you? Haven't you? Yes, I have. She won't come back. She'll come back. She's bluffing. She'll come back. I wouldn't count on it. What inducements did you offer? By none. I kept remembering what she means to you. She means nothing to me, nothing at all. She's my nurse. Well, in that case, there's no problem. Come back here. I'll get her for you, Uncle. You think that's all a woman wants? Don't you? You want her, but you can't get her. You think I couldn't? You think if I really wanted her, I couldn't get her? I'm sure you couldn't. No. No, she's like the rest. Damn women. All they think about. No. To hell with her. Tell the captain to weigh anchor as soon as they're through with the repairs. Now, get out. Get out! Captain! Captain! Sir, we're ready to sail. We're not. I'm going ashore. What, right now, sir? Right now. Get one of the boys. And I'll come with you, Uncle. You'll stay where you are, one of the boys. I'll take you, sir. Tell him where she is. Mr. Richmond is waiting for you downstairs. 
Miss, are you coming back? Sit down. A drink? It's hot. No, thank you. That damn truck. Now then, what have you got to say for yourself? Why did you leave the yacht? That must be obvious. You're too sensitive. The boy was careless. You nearly killed him. And you took such pleasure watching. This Marcello, there are certain things about a man a sick man, an old, broken man, things even you as a nurse wouldn't understand. Want to understand, I'm glad to say. Why one becomes the way one is, why one acts in a certain way. Afterwards, I admit, I felt ashamed. Afterwards? Yes, afterwards. Look here, no good beating about. You know why I'm here. What do you want, to come back? Would it be too much to ask for an apology? I'll give you money. You tried that once before. So each time, each time you don't like what I do say, I have to, to eat humble pie. No. How can that possibly profit you? Perhaps there are things about, about a woman which you don't fully understand. Perhaps. You're an extraordinary woman. And beautiful. And I think, hope, kind. Are those compliments instead of an apology? You drive an excessively hard bargain. I haven't apologized since, since I was a little boy, my father. He drove a hard bargain, too. I apologize. Thank you. You'll come back. When I don't need you anymore as a nurse. I'll go somewhere else, where I am needed. Look, look at me. I want you to be honest with me. Do you find me repellent? Depends on your moods. But to see me like this in a chair. Doesn't it offend you? Not at all. My money, that offend you? Only when you use it to hurt others. I told you I'll come back to the yacht. Why do you torture yourself with all these questions? Isn't it obvious? I want to find out what you really think of me. I haven't spoken to anyone like this before in my life. Then don't now. Please. But I want to. Want you to marry me. You think I'd be impossible? I want you to tell me frankly. Why are you trembling? Excited? Afraid? No. I'm afraid. Don't. It's bad for you. Please answer me, Maria. I... I don't know what to say. How long can I last? Not too long, eh? Even without cigars. We'll go back to the yacht, shall we? Ring, I'll be wed 
Now, with all my worldly goods, I thee endow. I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> She seems to make him happy. She yeah. really is quite lovely. But they do tend to age overnight. By the time she's 40, my dear, he should worry. Lovely party. Congratulations. Thank you. I think I'll leave you to it, my dear. Can't stand the sight of these sharks gulping my champagne. Oh, Charles, I'll come with you. No, no, no. Will you leave a bit? Break up the party? Thomas, wheel me off. Go on. Enjoy yourself. You. I didn't see you. Well, suit you, Maria. You know, you were right to go to any lengths to get it. <laughs> you make it sound as though I'd committed a crime. He wanted me to marry him. I don't think he'll regret it. I'm going to be fair with him. I hope that doesn't mean you're going to be unfair with me. Remember, one million pounds. I remember. You know you can trust me. You must be patient on my honeymoon. Marriage was just the first step, Maria. The rest will all happen if I make him happy. Already he's a different person. Didn't you see tonight? He wasn't rude once. I'm really going to make him happy. Yes. And uh, where do I come in? <laughs> Don't be foolish. I'll be fair with you, too. Yes? Oh, excuse me, sir. Mr. Richmond sent a message about a fishing trip tomorrow. I've, I've arranged the launch for 10 o'clock. Uh, thank you, Captain. Mrs. Richmond will tell him. Yes, sir. It's all right. I don't think he saw anything. There was nothing to see. No? Yes, let us give you a hand, Uncle. Get away from me. I can't let my own cat. Do as he says. Please, Charles. Let him help you. Don't want any help. He's too strong for you, sir.
Let's let it go. It's not worth it. It's always worth it, big devil. Well, what do you think of it? Are you asking me as a relative or as a secretary? You mean you disapprove? It's a very efficient document. Very clear. You're leaving her your personal fortune. Still not satisfied? I've doubled your money, haven't I? Still not enough? You want more? Everything? No, I'm happy you found someone deserving at last. Apart from the dog's home, I mean. Call the witnesses. Mistake. You think she married me for my money? What do you think? Let me astonish you, my dear boy. I never did think she married me for my sex appeal. But she likes me. Nothing you can say can alter that. She likes me. Good morning, sir. Now then, sign this. Both of you. Witness my signature. Why not wait a little, Uncle? I think it's a mistake leaving everything to her so soon. You hardly know her. It's unlike you to be so impetuous. You, sign. Now, you, boy. All right, you can go back to the yacht. Never embarrass me like that again, do you hear? Never again. Take that to the lawyers as soon as we get home. Where's she going? Uh, she prefers to swim in the sea. I don't like her going out alone. Uh, she's a strong swimmer. No, it's dangerous swimming alone in these waters. Go after her. just made it. Oh. You're much too valuable to take such risks. So your husband thinks, anyway. He sent you to look after me? Yes. 
And I've got news. He's done it. He's changed his will. Just now? You mean it? Mm, despite my protests. Signed and witnessed. Oh. It's all yours. How wonderful! So we won, then. Well, not quite. You see, I have to register the will with the lawyers when we get back to England. But meanwhile, you'll look after the old man, won't you? I would anyway. Cutting that fishing line yesterday was a masterstroke. Strangely enough, I was only thinking of him. I was afraid he'd harm himself. Before he changed the will, you mean, of course. I don't mean that at all. You really enjoy playing Mrs. Richmond, don't you, Maria? That's what you wanted, isn't it? Charming. Now she's got the old boy's money, she's making a play for the young one. I told you I'd be fair to both of you. No, no. Splendid transmission from Milan. Just putting that bit on the table. Something to do when I'm alone. Can you tell what that is? Beethoven? Yes, but what? What? Oh, you know I'm no good at guessing. The daily. You're all so full of life, vitality. Story of a devoted wife. The daily. You know something, Maria? As a boy, all I wanted was to be a conductor. Been good at it, too. Authority. My father thought differently. Sent me round the world to buy. Bought what I liked and brought it home. Become a habit. Buy what I liked. And I like you, Charles. Very much. I believe you mean it. Yes, I do. Astonishing. Go to sleep now. We are home tomorrow. You must get a good night's rest. Nice to see you concerned about me. I am concerned. It'll be good to be in England again. Something about the country makes me more at ease than any other place. Always has since I was young. I'm not sure why. <laughs> of course, I used to walk then. Country road. I want you to like it there. Foxhurst for you now. Best thing I've got out of a long, empty, greedy life. I don't want you to be lonely there as I've been. Enjoy your life. Enjoy it. Let it make you happy. I insist you are happy. Oh, Charles. How can you order people to be happy? <laughs> but I am. Really, I am. There's your draft for whenever you wake. Now, don't just lie there. Take it and go off again. Whatever you say. You're my nurse. I'm your wife. So you are, my dear. So you are. Maria. Something I meant to tell you. Enjoyed myself these last few weeks, more than I have in years. I'm grateful. Good night.
Good morning, Thomas. You're up early, miss. I mean, Mrs. Richard. Yes, I... I couldn't sleep. How long before we dock? An hour and a half, maybe. I'll see to Mr. Richmond's breakfast myself. Morning, madam. Let the coffee perk a little longer. Very black. Yes. Give him two eggs. Mm -hmm. And cover the dish so the eggs stay warm. Yes, Mrs. Richmond. Mr. Richmond, so pleased to be getting to England. I want him to have a real English breakfast. Good morning, Charles. You can see England in the distance. I've cooked your eggs and bacon for breakfast. What do you say to that? Charles? Charles? Tony. Tony. Hello. He's dead. Charles is dead. What? Dead? My God, how? I don't know. I went to his cabin for breakfast with him. His eyes were open and staring You're at... sure he's dead? Not unconscious. He's dead. Well, that's that. The will's not valid, hasn't been registered yet. You won't get a penny. All those months of waiting, all that money. You came so close to it within hours. Just a minute. Have you told anyone he's dead? No. You're sure? Yes, I came straight to you. That was just a chance. What are you? Come on, quickly. He's dead, all right. You don't feel anything. What should I feel? I'll call the captain. No. Now listen carefully. He's not dead. If you want that money, he's alive. He's alive. But everyone will know. No one will know. When you go to the kitchen, get his breakfast, wheel it in yourself, spend a few minutes here. No, You'll Tony, tell the I... boys he's tired, needs more sleep. Then come and join me in the saloon. But don't forget to lock this door. Oh, Tony. You may still be all right. Two hours, and he'll go ashore. The 
marriage, the trip. They've all exhausted him. He won't wish to see anyone. I will register the will in London. Then he dies of a heart attack in his own home. But a doctor will know. No, I'll send a doctor. A doctor who, for a fee, will certify that he died at Foxhurst. How do we get him off the boat? You'll wheel him in the chair. This car will be at the dock. Oh, no. I can't do it. Listen, he wanted you to have his money. If you want to carry out his wishes, you'll go through with this. Go to his cabin. I'll join you there. Always keep the door locked. Now his clothes. His clothes, Maria. He's alive, Maria. Alive. going to help me get him off the ship. No, I'll be busy with the customs. I can't do it alone. I can't. You don't have to. Thomas will help. He'll know. He'll know. What if you keep your head? Just think what this means to us. It's just a short trip from the dock to the house. As soon as you get him in his room, lock the door. Don't let anybody in except the doctor. And I'll get him to you just as fast as I can. All right? Just a drink, please. Everything just as I told you. Remember? Now, I don't want you to talk, Charles. It's Dan. There's a drizzle. Keep your scarf over your mouth. There. That's it. It's all right, Charles. I can do it.
Well, you feeling better, sir? Thank you, Captain. I don't want him to talk. Everything's ready, madam. All right, Uncle? I told him not to talk. I don't want the cold air to. Uh, quite right. Get him in. Do you have a match, John? Mr. Richmond wants to smoke, and I've left my lighter on my other jacket. Yes, sir. Here you are, Uncle. Only one now. Mind what the doctor said. Thank you, John. Sir? Baines. You know Mrs. Richmond? Yes, of course. Welcome home, madam. Mr. Richmond is ill, I'm afraid. Uh, there's a fire lit in his room, madam. Thank you. Oh, allow me, madam. He's fallen asleep. Take him up carefully. John, take me straight to London. Yes, sir. Uh, the office will know where I can be reached. Thank you, Baines. Shall I prepare lunch, madam? 
Later, perhaps, if Mr. Richmond wakes up. Don't disturb us unless I ring. Very good, madam. Mr. Anthony Richmond, please. When do you expect him? Tell him Mrs. Charles Richmond called. It's urgent. May I have the dinner trolley, madam? Mr. Richmond sleeping. I'll ring if I need anything. Very good, madam. Good morning, madam. Yes, what do you want? I've prepared breakfast. I'm not hungry. Well, perhaps Mr. Richmond would like something. He's not well. Then let me send for the doctor, madam. I've already called the doctor. I'm expecting him any minute. Show him up the moment he comes. Oh, it's not serious, I'm sure. He just needs rest. The chauffeur's waiting below. Shall I give him any orders? Not at the moment. Thank you, Baines. Mr. Richmond. Then find him. I want Mr. Richmond. Do you hear? I want... Mrs. Richmond, my name's Loma. I've come about your husband. Oh, thank God. Please come in. I've been expecting you. Why haven't you closed his eyes? Why, I couldn't. I couldn't touch him. You arrived back in England yesterday? Yes. When did your husband die? On the yacht before we docked. What did you think caused his death? His heart. He was a sick man. He could well have gone any time. Who brought him up here? One of the servants. And he noticed nothing? No. He thought he was sleeping. But if you knew he was dead, why did you bring him all the way here? Why didn't you inform the harbor police when you docked? But... 
Why are you asking me all this? Dr. Loma, you... Dr. Loma. I'm afraid there's been some misunderstanding. Baines called me. I'm not a doctor. I'm a police officer. Boy. Good morning, Baines. Good morning, sir. Mrs. Richmond is waiting. Before I see Mrs. Richmond, there are one or two questions I'd like to ask you. Certainly, sir. Mr. Richmond was alive when you took him upstairs. Are you quite positive of that? Yes, sir. He was sleeping. Sleeping? Could you have been mistaken? Perhaps he was dead. No, sir. Can you be sure? Certainly, sir. How? I, I heard him breathing. Actually heard him? There's nothing wrong with my hearing or any of my faculties for that matter. No one entered the room with Mr. Richmond beside his wife? Only myself, sir. I brought dinner on a trolley and took it away. For two? Yes, sir. They both had dinner. I see. When did you become worried about him? When I went to his room yesterday morning, Mrs. Richmond wouldn't let me in. Didn't want me to serve breakfast. I could see Mr. Richmond still sitting there in his chair. I felt sure that something was wrong. Wrong? Well, that he was dead. So I called you. Permit me, sir. Thank you. Come in. You still insist that your husband died on the yacht, Mrs. Richmond? Yes, he did. What did you do when you went to the cabin and found him dead? I rang for help. Really? And no one came? No. I don't know why. I don't think the bell could have been working. Why didn't you go to the captain? I didn't go to the captain because I... I was too upset. I see. What were your feelings for Mr. Richmond? I mean, did you find him an easy person to get on with? I grew to understand him. Marriage softened his nature? It seemed to. But he remained a difficult man? Not to me. He was happy. A happy man with a will to live? Would that describe him? He had the will to live. He knew his condition. Before you were married, you were his nurse, I believe. Yes. And after the marriage, you continued to nurse him? Naturally. So whatever medicines were given to him, sedatives, sleeping drafts, and so on, you gave him, no one else? No one else, no. He had no access to medicines without your knowledge? No. And from the moment you arrived back, no one was with your husband except yourself? No. What medicines did you give him? None, I told you. He was dead, he died at sea. So you say. But if, in fact, he died here, you were the only person with him. But he didn't. He died on the yacht from a heart attack. Wherever your husband died, he did not die of a heart attack. He died of barbiturate poisoning. Mrs. Richmond, your husband was murdered. He was not. It's not possible. It's impossible. She couldn't have done it. Have you charged her? Not yet. What was your relationship with Mrs. Richmond? Quite normal. I still can't take this in. But you didn't approve of her marriage to your uncle? Well, frankly, not at first. I was afraid she was marrying him for his money. I see. And after the marriage, were there any hints that she might want to get rid of him? Good God, no. In fact, she did seem to develop a genuine affection for him. She's been asking to see you. Have you any objection? Well, of course not. I want to help in any way I can. Mrs. Richmond, would you repeat what you told us about your husband's death? Tony, they don't believe me. Tell them he was dead on the boat. Is that so? I told you. Would you repeat it, please? My uncle was alive when he reached this house. But 
that's not true. I haven't seen Mrs. Richmond since this terrible thing happened, and I must speak to her for a few minutes alone. Very well. In any case, I have no further questions for Mrs. Richmond at the moment. You don't seem to understand. Charles was murdered. You said he was alive when we brought him home. Now they'll be... That's what we agreed. I didn't know you told Lomer otherwise. I couldn't change my story within minutes. And why didn't you let him into the room anyway? I thought it was the doctor you'd send. Why didn't you ring me? I was going out of my mind waiting. What can I tell them now? How can I explain taking the body ashore? We'll just have to tell them what happened. What do you mean? Well, if we deceived everyone into thinking he was still alive, that you didn't call a doctor because you're waiting for me to register the will. In any case, don't say any more until we've spoken to the lawyers. But they said Charles was poisoned. They think I did it. Oh, that's absurd. You had every reason to keep him alive. Who killed him, Tony? Who could have done it? Who killed him? Well, they'll find that out. If you just speak the truth, you've nothing to fear. And remember, I'll be with you. I'm engaging a lawyer on Mrs. Richmond's behalf. By all means. Mrs. Richmond, I must ask you not to leave the house. Well, is she under arrest? No. But in her own interest, it would be best for her to remain here. Very well. I'll arrange for the lawyers to come here. Thomas? Yes, sir? I want a word with you, please. I read the statement that you gave to Sergeant Peters. You're quite certain that Mr. Richmond was alive when you wheeled him off the yacht? Yes, sir, quite certain. Did he speak to you? No, sir, he, he wasn't well. You're not sorry he's dead. You and your brother hated the old man, didn't you? He wasn't easy. So I gathered. There's nothing you want to add to that statement? No, sir. Thank you. What would you say the relationship was between Mr. and Mrs. Richmond before they were married? She hated him. Hated? That's a strong word. How'd she show this hatred? She insulted him in front of us, shouted at him. In front of the crew? Several times. And she went ashore, walked out on him. She came back. That doesn't indicate hatred. Mr. Richmond brought her back. Bribed her, I dare say. Bribed her to marry him? Perhaps. And after they were married? Well, she seemed to get more fond of him, but I knew she was acting. Now, why do you say that? Because of the time I saw her and Anthony Richmond together. Together doing what? She was embracing him. Don't you mean they were embracing? From what I saw. He was just being polite. He was leading him on. She was after him, all right. I see. Where's this ring? The steward's quarters. But there's no one there. Do you want something? No. No. You were one of the witnesses to the changed will, I believe. I was. What was Anthony Richmond's reaction? Well, he disagreed with it as far as Mrs. Richmond was concerned. He thought Mr. Richmond couldn't be sure of her. Thank you. Wouldn't like the job of handling her defense. You say you brought your husband's body ashore, Mrs. Richmond, pretending he was still alive. Why did you do that? My husband had made out a will in Mallorca leaving all his money to me. I knew that it had to be registered here before it was valid, and I wanted people to believe that he was alive until after that was done. I know that sounds bad, calculating and bad, but that's what I did. I'm telling the truth. I got him ashore and into the house. Everyone says he was alive when he reached the house. 
And the servants, the chauffeur. But they were meant to think that, don't you see? I may do, Mrs. Richmond. But the police think you're lying. I'm not lying. Why should they invent such a story? Perhaps for this reason. If your husband had died on the yacht, many people might have killed him. In this house, only you. But he died on the yacht. Aren't you my lawyer? Don't you believe me? To help you, I have to look at things from every side. Um, this story of the will, is that what you've told the police? No, I, I haven't told them about the will. Not yet. I shouldn't, if I were you. Why not? Under English law, a will does not have to be registered to be valid. What? It has only to be witnessed by two persons, and this one was so witnessed in Mallorca. The will was effective from that time. Oh, that's impossible. I can't believe it. Oh, no. No, it can't be. There must be some explanation. I, I must have misunderstood. But he did tell me he was going to London to register. He did. Mrs. Richmond's with the lawyers in the study. lied to me about the will. Why? The will? What about the will? These are my lawyers. They are here to help me. Tell them the truth. Well, I'll tell them anything you want me to once I know what it is. What is it you want me to say? What do I want? We planned all this from the beginning. Tell them. Planned? Planned what? You don't have to pretend anymore. Tell them how you chose me, how you planned for me to marry Charles. I was against the marriage from the start. Yes. Yes, that was part of the plan, to make him want me. Part of what plan, Mrs. Richmond? To get his money. You see, he wanted me to marry Charles, make him change his will in my favor. And why should he do that? I was to pay him a million pounds when I inherited the money. Remember, Tony? Oh, this is preposterous. I opposed the will. Lie. It's true, I tell you. Is that why you killed your husband? I didn't. I didn't. He died on the boat. He made me wheel him ashore, pretending he was alive. I didn't want to. He made me do it. Why should he do that? To give him time to register the will. A will doesn't have to be registered. I didn't know that. I didn't know. You know he died on the boat. Why don't you tell them? But how can I, when everyone knows he was alive when he reached this house? I lit a cigarette for him myself in the car. It's you. You did it. You killed him. I know the truth. I know the truth. I want to tell you the truth. He did it. He killed Charles. He did it. It's him. It's him. Believe me. No. No. <laughs> To say that I was a party to a scheme to get her to marry my uncle is absolutely preposterous. I persistently warned him against her. So I understand. You told me at our first interview that your relationship with Mrs. Richmond was 
quite normal. That's not strictly true, is it? She had, in fact, shown that she was attracted to you. Why didn't you tell me this? Well, I... I didn't want it to get out. Well, God knows she was in deep enough. I understand you didn't reciprocate her feelings. Why not? She's a very attractive woman. Of course. But I worked for my uncle. She was his wife. I see. Thank you, Mr. Richmond. She has been asking to see you again. I don't know whether you'd want to in the circumstances. Very well. I'll see her. I'll make the arrangements. You are only allowed ten minutes. Well, I felt I had to come. You know, it's a pity it had to be you. You were the right person, that's all. You planned to do this from the beginning. From the first time we met. Well, uh, before we met, actually. You were the person I needed, that's all. Richmond liked to use people. So I used him. And you. You did, too. You couldn't wait to get that money. You killed him for it. I can't tell you the pleasure it gave me. You fool. You didn't have to do it. Couldn't you see the way I felt about you? I believed in you. Someday it would all have been yours as well as mine. Do you think I would have trusted you? Trusted any woman? I saw the way you fawned on him, just like my mother did. Like some cringing spaniel bitch. And I trusted you. Yes, because I offered you one of the largest fortunes in the world. Did you really think it would be as easy as all that? I don't want that money anymore. I know that now. You can have it. Take it. Take it all. You deserve it. Well, I get it anyway. Don't you see? When you're convicted, all Richmond's money goes to his next of kin. Me. So that's it. You're mad. I can see it now. You're mad. No, Maria. It takes a very sane person to plan something perfect. And this is perfect. You want me to die? You want me to die? You murderer! How many lives do you want to destroy? You'll never get away with it! Never! Never! They will believe me! They will! They will! Leave me alone. Go away. Get out. I have little more to say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. It is my view that much hinges in this case upon whether you believe the accused's rather colorful story, that she found her husband dead on the yacht, and for what she thought was a technical necessity in relation to his will, removed his body to the house. Is this true, or did she make up this story for her own purposes? You have heard the evidence of many witnesses that Mr. Richmond was alive when he arrived at his house. From that time, until Mr. Richmond was found dead in his chair by Detective Inspector Loma, Mrs. Richmond was alone with her husband. If in fact you believe the evidence that Mr. Richmond was alive when he reached his house, 
you may think the only conclusion you can come to is that he was murdered by the defendant. The medical evidence, unfortunately, cannot help you. Because of the length of time the body had been dead, it has not been possible to determine accurately enough the time of the death. At latest, it must be assumed, however, that he died during the day of his arrival at Foxhurst. The autopsy shows that the dinner apparently eaten by Mr. and Mrs. Richmond that night was not, in fact, consumed by the deceased. You must therefore determine in your own minds whose evidence you believe. In reaching your verdict, I must ask you to consider only the evidence you have heard presented in this court. I shall now ask you to perform your solemn duty. It's what we expected. Yes, Baines. Helping me, Mr. Richmond. Helping you? Well, the case is closed. There's new evidence. Really? What evidence? After the verdict, Thomas came to see me. He now confirms Mrs. Richmond's story that your uncle died on the yacht. Well, that's absurd. You had his statement? I wasn't telling the truth, sir. He was dead. I saw Mrs. Richmond on the deck. Then I went into his cabin to draw the curtains. And I found him dead. I thought she had killed him. Oh, he's obviously lying, trying to save her. And we know why, don't we? Do we, Mr. Richmond? 
You must know the boy's infatuated with her. He'd lie his head off. And he did lie. Up to now. You mean that when we brought him home, the old boy was actually dead? You ought to know. Didn't you light his cigarette? I? Oh, no, I, I lit. Well, that's to say... You didn't tell the truth either, did you, Mr. Eastman? Did you? The court accepted my evidence. Yes, it did. But now we have a new witness. Thomas, a perjured witness? Not Thomas, your uncle. Thomas withheld this for reasons you've already mentioned. I thought he meant her. I thought he meant Mrs. Richmond. That I heard all those lies in court. The bell. Can't make anyone hear. You've got the bell. See your game. Right through. Think I can't get anyone. Tell anyone. I record. Record. Oh, God. Feel it coming over me. The poison. You've poisoned me. I record it. You. You. Poisoned me. The date's not important, Mr. Richmond. Lies! What lies? That you went to your uncle's cabin after his wife left? That you poisoned his sedative? That you disconnected the bell so he couldn't call for help? When Thomas came to the cabin in the morning, he found your uncle dead, clutching the hand microphone with the used spool spinning on the tape recorder. Thomas suspected Mrs. Richmond. He played over the tape, and then he took it, thinking it was her your uncle was accusing. It was. It was her. It could have been, until I saw your reaction. You know better now, don't we? Thank you, Thomas.